everyone and welcome back to EdTech Classroom. For today's tech tip, I'm going to be showing you how to use the rubric and the gradebook features in Google Classroom. Grading in Google Classroom can be really time consuming and I totally get it. But I'm super excited about today's video because I'm actually going to show you how you can save time using the rubric feature in Google Classroom. So without further ado, let's get started. So you'll see that I'm on the classwork tab in Google Classroom here, and I'm going to show you how you can actually create a rubric for an activity. Now, what I love about creating rubrics in Google Classroom is that it makes grading so, so, so much easier. So I'm really excited to show you this tech tip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find an activity. So for example, let's say this STEM challenge for Thursday. I'm going to click on the dot, 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 and then I'm going to click the edit button. So next you'll see that on the right hand side here, there's actually a button that says rubric. Now what's really awesome is that when you click this rubric button, you have three different options. So first you can create a rubric, which is what I'm going to show you how to do in a little bit. Then I'll show you how to reuse a rubric. And then the last option here is that you can import one from Google Sheets. So let's say, for example, if you created a really awesome rubric in Google Sheets and you want to actually be able to import that, you can do that using this feature here. So that's really handy if you've actually already created a rubric using Google Sheets. But for now, like I said, I'm going to show you how you can create a rubric. So I'll click this Create Rubric button. And now I'm taken to a page that looks like this. So you'll see it says Rubric up here in the top left corner. And then it has the name of my activity. And for this activity, I'm going to be using scoring. Now this is because uh, I actually want this activity to be graded with a certain number of points. So here you'll see now it says sort the order of points by descending or ascending. So now this just kind of depends on your personal preference. I personally like doing descending order because it just makes sense for the way my brain works, but you do have the option to do ascending if that's something that you prefer. So I'll click on descending here and now I can start importing my rubric. Now I've actually created a rubric that I like to use in Google Docs. So I'm gonna take a look at that so I can get some inspiration for my rubric for this activity. So you'll see here, I have my design thinking rubric that I've created. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start copying and pasting, but you also can actually um, type out this stuff if you prefer, if you haven't created a separate rubric. So for example, the criterion title here is going to be empathize and define because that's going to be the first thing that I want to be grading students on. So here I can actually add a description. So for example, this could be a place where you could actually describe the standard. Um, but for me, for right now, I'm just going to say empathize and define stages of design thinking. So next I have to choose the number of points. Now you'll see that this is a required field because I've chosen for this to be, uh, you know, using scoring, using points. So for example, what I'll do is I'll create a four because I'm an elementary school teacher and I just like to use a four point, uh, you know, four point rubric. Um, so what I'll do now is I'll go back and I'll see, okay, great. So this first one is exceeds standards, always creates human centered empathetic solutions. So now what I'll go here and do is I'll type in the level title, which is exceeds standards. And now I can add the description. So I'll just paste in my description here. Um, but again, you can um, always type yours in as well. So next to add a new level, I'll click here on the plus button. And now I can add the next number of points, which is going to be three. And this one is meet standards. Then I'll go back and I'll copy this next one. And I'll paste it. Perfect, looks good. I'll do the next one which is works towards standards. So I'll do two points works towards standards. Then I'll click the plus. And then lastly, beginning to work toward standards. So do one point beginning to work towards standards. Perfect. So now what you can do is after you create this first one, now you can either, you have two options. So first you can add more criterion. So let's say like with this example, there are multiple different things that I wanna be grading students on. I could add that next section by clicking this add a criterion button, but I can also actually create a duplicate copy. So something that I've noticed in my rubrics with elementary school students is that there tends to be a lot of repetition in the language and the points. So what I really like to do is I actually like to duplicate a section. So to do that, what you'll do is you'll click the three dots here, then you'll click duplicate. 
And now you'll see that I actually have another copy of the exact same thing. So it copied everything here. But what I'll do is I'll make some slight changes based off of the next element in my rubric. So if I go back here, okay, great. Brainstorm is the next section. So what I can do is I'll say, okay, instead of empathize and define, I'll type in brainstorm. And then great, I still want it to be exceed standards and four points. And I'll just paste the new description. And I'll keep filling in the rest of this section here. And so now what I can do is I can just keep doing this for every section of my rubric. And then when I'm done, I'll click the save button here in the top right hand corner. So for the next couple seconds here, I'm just going to go through and I'm going to finish this rubric and then I'll click the save button and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, perfect. So now that I'm all done, I'm just going to click this save button. And now you'll see that a rubric has been attached to this activity. So the next thing I'm going to show you is that you can also update these points here. So right now my activity is assigned for 100 points. But for me, I like to match this to my rubric. Again, totally up to you, your choice, but I'm going to change this to be 24 points so that it matches my rubric here. Then I'll click the save button again. I'll click update and you'll see that now the rubric has been added to the activity. I can just see it here. So if I want to click on this, I can actually view my rubric all together in one place. Uh, it just keeps it really organized so you can always uh, check your rubric. And of course, if you want to edit it, you can just edit it by clicking these three dots here, then clicking the edit button. So next I'm gonna show you how you can actually reuse a rubric. So let's say now for this Friday activity here, I wanna add the exact same rubric. So I'll click on the three dots here and I'll click the edit button. Now I'll click the rubric button and now I'm gonna click the button that says reuse rubric. So what I'll do is, okay, I want it to be the exact same rubric here as this Thursday STEM challenge. I'll click select. I can change the points too. I'll press save and now the rubric has been added to this activity as well. So what's really awesome about creating rubrics in Google Classroom, well, one of the many things that's awesome about creating a rubric is that you're actually able to attach it to multiple different assignments. So instead of having to go through that process over and over again, you can just click the reuse rubric button and you can reuse it on as many activities or assignments as you'd like. So now I'm actually going to show you how you can grade a student's work using this rubric. So for example, if I click on this STEM Challenge Friday activity here, and I click the View Assignment button, you'll see that it looks like, okay, one of my students has actually turned in this assignment with an attachment. So when I click on their name here, I'll be able to see their activity that they've submitted, and so now I can actually grade their assignment directly within Google Classroom. So to do that, what I can do is I can say, okay, they get a four for empathy, a three for brainstorm, a three for design, a four for ideate and build, you know, a two for prototyping, and a three for testing, for example. So now that I'm ready, and I think this looks pretty good, okay, the students received a 19 out of 24. I can add some comments if I'd like as well. And I can click the return button so that my student can actually view feedback on the assignment. So now when I'm ready, I can just click on the arrow to go to the next student. So the next thing that I wanna show you is how we can use the gradebook feature in Google Classroom. So right now we're on the classwork tab and we're gonna take a look at the grades section here. 
So I absolutely love this grade section. I think it keeps it really organized for me to be able to see where all of my students have, you know, have all of my students in the same place so I can view all of their different assignments and I can figure out which students, you know, haven't been turning in work, which students have turned in all of their work, and I can keep track of grades. So it's really nice that Google Classroom organizes this for you. So I'm going to show you some key features of the gradebook section of Google Classroom. So for example, you'll notice that at the top here, I have the name of all of the different activities. And then on the left hand side, I have a name, I have a list of all of the different students. So in my example class here, I only have three students, but normally if you have a class that's bigger than three students, you would see all of their names listed down here on the left hand side. And again, all of the activities are listed up here across the top. So if we take a look at EdTech Student 1, you'll see that for this activity, because it's due today, this is blank because the student has yet to submit the activity. And you'll see that because it's a graded activity, they'll be scored out of 24 points, which is the number of points I assigned in the rubric that we looked at in the previous section of this video. So next here under the STEM check-in activity, you'll see that EdTech Student 1 has turned in this activity. Now it's an ungraded activity, and you know this because it says that there's it's not applicable because there's not able to be a class average because it's ungraded and i'll see that the student has turned in their work so that's how i know that they've completed the ungraded activity now again for this one here for edtech student number two this is blank because you'll see at the top here there is no due date for this assignment meaning that it's never going to have some sort of notification that says something like missing or you know incomplete and that's because there's no due date attached to this specific assignment. So whenever you see something that's blank, it usually means that the due date hasn't approached yet and the student hasn't submitted their work, or there's no due date and again, the student has yet to submit their work. Now, if we go over here to this October 2nd STEM challenge activity, you'll notice that there is a red button that says missing. So we'll see red text here that says missing and missing here. This means that it's past the due date. So today is actually past October 2nd, meaning that EdTech Student 1 and EdTech Student 3 did not complete their assignment. So I am missing their activity. Now another thing that you'll notice is that after a student does submit their work, but they submit it late, there is some text underneath the activity here that says done late, meaning that I can still provide the student with feedback, I can still give the student a grade, but I am made aware by Google Classroom that the student did submit their work late. So that's another helpful feature. Now, if I wanted to actually take a look at a specific activity, so let's say, okay, um, you know, EdTech student two here, they submitted their work late. I wanna take, I wanna take a look at this activity specifically. I can click on the three dots here and I can view their submission, or I can also return the activity to them after I've provided them with comments. So that's another helpful feature that you can see in the Google uh, Classroom gradebook. Thank you so much for watching today's tech tip. I hope you enjoyed learning about the rubric feature and the gradebook feature in Google Classroom. If you liked this video, be sure to give me a thumbs up. You can uh, subscribe if you're not already, and I'll see you back here next week on Tech Tuesday. Bye, friends.